Now, if you think about it, technology has woven itself into our daily lives a lot over the past decades. We've had the radio, the television, the personal computer, but it can be argued that there has been no technology more utilized by every human being in the last 20 plus years than the cell phone, mobile communications. But when it comes to improving mobile communications, the world finds itself in a bit of a tug of war in regards to what's next, what improvements can be made, what businesses can be spawned from it. And that's where Finger Motion comes into play. A company that started as a back-end payment processor for China Mobile and China Unicon customers is now expanding into becoming a data analysis company. A company that analyzes consumer behavior and activities for government departments and corporate customers. And that's where this man comes in, Martin Chen, the CEO of Finger Motion on Wall Street this week, and joining me for an exclusive interview to discuss the company and its latest expansion. So what we do, in essence, we started our company as a payment processor. So we handle the payment processing for China Mobile and China Unicom customers that want to, in essence, top up their phone and yes, keep their account active. And so they top it up, and we are the payment processor in the back end that handles that transaction. What we've been able to do now, though, is we got the license from China Mobile and China Unicom to study the user data. So we're looking at about 1.5 to 1.6 billion user accounts and having access to that data that we can analyze and use for different purposes. Our fundamental business was about collecting payment processing and all that. But I think what we've been able to do now is because of the access to this data, uh, we're really going to try to start growing our data side, our data company, to the point where we actually have a data arm uh, called Sapientis. And a couple of points that I'd like to make about our data. One, we don't own it. So the data has continued to be owned by the telcos. And two, the data that we actually have access to has already been scrubbed for anonymity. So we don't get personal information. Uh, what we do maybe get is an account number or uh, some sort of identifier. And from there, we can study the demographic uh, information of that particular account. Now, this interview would not be complete without addressing the hot topic of data collection. There's plenty of detractors and some supporters, and opinions can be found all over the place for and against data collection. Usually the biggest concern, data security. People, they do not want their data collected and then breached. And then, in addition for a company such as Finger Motion, there's some that will raise a red flag over the company operating mainly out of mainland China given contemporary political headlines. Now, to address these questions, to address these concerns, once again, Martin Shen. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that there's always a country risk um, because of uh, any political aspects in terms of privacy. But the one thing that we, I think, have going for us is that that data that we actually do have access to, like I mentioned, is anonymous and is fed by the telcos. So we don't uh, have access to all the information. We really just have access to maybe 2,000, 3,000 individual data points for all the data that we collect. And I think that that helps us um, work that with that demographic information and then hopefully feed that out as a risk rating. Uh, and right now we're working with insurance companies, uh, Munich Re and Pacific Life Re, uh, because they like the data that we're collecting on their behalf. Having a user base of, let's say, 1.5 or 1.6 billion users and collecting not only the payment processing side, but also the data collection side, it, it's a heck of a good playground to work in and really build the fundamentals of that algorithm that we're working on, which means that you have a benchmark for the data that you have and then when you try to export that or move that to a different jurisdiction, you already know what the milestones are. The, the beauty of the data that we have is in essence, it's human behavior, it's human nature. You pick up your phone, everybody has a cell phone, right? And we're, we're tracking that kind of information from the moment that you tap your phone in the morning to the moment that you put it down at night, you know? Theoretically, with our demographic information, we kind of know uh, where that person is moving, how fast they're moving, are they going to work? Um, uh, you know, what do they do on Friday nights? Do they go to the gym? That kind of stuff. And that kind of information, I think, is why the insurance companies see so much value in what we have. Um, like I said, everyone has a mobile phone. And if they can use that information to help augment their insurance portfolios, I think that that's the value. And if we can take that outside of insurance, that would be one of the goals that we have going forward. So, back to the bottom line. How is the business doing, short term, long term? How does one project the company Finger Motion will perform? What are the ultimate goals for Finger Motion? For those answers, we go back to CEO Martin Shen. 
Well, we've, we've been growing quite steadily over the last few years. And because of the data angle that we have now, we, we expect that business to go even farther. It's going to be a, a large revenue stream for us. We've been talking to a lot of shareholders and a lot of investors who are very bullish on our future. And they like the plans that we're, you know, we're, we're anticipating we can do, um, you know, spreading throughout China and then hopefully taking our platform elsewhere. Because that, that algorithm that we have for data collection is transportable. You know, we can move it to different jurisdictions and that will ultimately be our goal. We're very optimistic about where we think our company can go, uh, not just in the revenue stream point of view, but like I mentioned, uh, the ability to move it to a different jurisdiction. Uh, we want to take it, because right now we are China-centric, and the ability to maybe move it into other countries in Southeast Asia, uh, maybe a West Europe or, or North America, that will be the ultimate goal. And then also moving it outside of uh, InsureTech as well. So right now we work with very large insurance companies, but then we look to maybe work uh, outside of that, maybe in healthcare or in financial services, because we have that ability to provide that risk rating information that maybe financial uh, institutions would want or, or healthcare to augment health information. Um, the growth, uh, certainly within the first couple quarters of this year, has been really strong, and we anticipate that growing through Q3 and Q4. And so with the, hopefully the onset of the monetization of the insurance, either within this fiscal year or next fiscal year, I think we'll be doing uh, good business, let's put it that way.